Hi, this is John Abraham and please watch me on icflix.com. Shoot out at Vadala and uh, race two. We began our year with race two, which was uh, which did very well, and uh, shoot out at Vadala, which again did very very well. So I've been fortunate to work with a stalwart like Mr. Kapoor, also Nana Patekar, who I did one of my most favorite films, Taxi Nadu Gyara, with, and Paresh Rawal, who I worked with on uh, Garam Masala. So, I mean, I worked with each of them in isolation, and today I'm working with them in a collective, uh, in a collective way, and it's 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 really honourable. It's fun, and it's, it's, it's a, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, the tough part is that in the scenes, uh, you know, my character opposes uh, uh, Anil and Nana's character, so so it becomes really tough on screen, but. But like I say, it's a collective effort, it's a complementary effort and we, we all get along like a house on fire and all of us in fact, Parish, Mr. Kapoor, Nana Patekar, uh, we're all one collective unit, we really, really get along and uh, it's, and more than anything else, I, I really like my producer, Firoz Nadia Dwala. I'm a big fan of my director, Anis Bazmi, because I really think that I believe that people who make pretentious films and the people who make very unpretentious, simple, sweet family films and I think Anis Bazmi belongs to the latter and he makes films that actually make you laugh without, you know, them really trying hard, which is why I'm such a big fan of his and I'm very fortunate to be on the set. Uh, everybody is very serious about their work. Fortunately, this group, everybody is so much, you'd be shocked if I told you that uh, Anil Kapoor goes to gym probably twice or thrice a day if he gets time to. Mr. Nana Patekar is in the gym at 4.30 in the morning. And uh, Paresh Rawal gets up really early to go to the gym. So everybody is on set on time. So we, we're, a very, we're a very disciplined unit. Very disciplined. Even Shruti Hassan is a very good girl. Very nice girl. And she's very professional. So we're all on set on time. So uh, the pranks do happen. I think... Uh, most of the jokes uh, are played by uh, Nana Patekar or Nana. He's a lot of fun, and he's a darling. He's a darling. We there's a lot of camaraderie. That's uh, very lucky to be on the set. My third film with him, and uh, let me tell you, he's uh, younger than me in his mind, and physically the energy he has is far more than any one of us on set has. That man's. Uh, He's an anomaly. He's, he's really energetic. We, we really haven't spoken about that. I think uh, what he's done with 24 is uh, he's been a catalyst to a lot of actors thinking as to how they can debut on the small screen in a very credible way. Because uh, serials generally are considered to be very uh, tacky and down market. With 24, what Mr. Kapoor has done is he's created a niche around uh, season programming in the country. And uh, I guess every actor on board must thank him for that. Dubai is a beautiful place. It's a lovely place. Uh, I come from a family of architects. So for me, Dubai is architecturally very liberating to, to see so many beautiful buildings around, especially where we're doing our interview. There's a place called Jabil Sarai. Right? So when you see the Dubai coastline from here, you really are impressed and you see a land which is barren and had nothing, has such a beautiful skyline today. And I think uh, that speaks a lot about the way the governance is in this uh, country. I think Dubai is a place where as long as you respect religion and the way of life and you know where to draw the line, this place is as liberal as it can get. And uh, I think uh, these guys here have got it absolutely right that. Uh, I believe uh, even with the Expo 2020, I think Dubai is in an upswing. And uh, there's a lot more that's going to happen in Dubai in the years to come. So uh, it's a very bright future for Dubai. Uh, Welcome Back uh, fits in very beautifully because Dubai is one of the characters in the film. And this is where the house of uh, Majnu and Uday Shetty are, which are the two characters played by Anil Kapoor and Nana Pateka. So uh, the scenes here are hilarious, a lot of fun. The night before last we were shooting on the Jumeirah walk outside uh, uh, the Sarai. 
Today I was shooting inside in, in the main lobby of the Jameel Sarai. We shot in uh, some exotic locations. We are shooting the Burj Khalifa. We are shooting on the Abu Dhabi race track. And so the film is going to have a grand scale. But most importantly, I think Welcome Back is very special because it's, it's unbelievably funny. It is so funny and it's a family film. You can go with your children, your grandparents, everybody and watch this film. It's awesome. No, when I'm acting, I'm just acting. And I, I dissociate myself from all the other aspects. But uh, pre the shoot, when I'm producing a film, and post the shoot, like Madras Cafe was a film I produced and acted in. That's when my, uh, my producer side kicks in. And I decide how I'm going to make this film. And after the film's over, I decide how I'm going to market this film. So, but while I'm shooting for the film on the set, I completely put my mind and immerse myself into how I'm going to perform. Because the rest of the work is done by Shujit Sarkar as a director. His company, his partner Ronnie, is an active line producer, an active producer. My partner, Sheel Kumar. So they took the burden off me of being a producer on the set. So. We've got a great mechanism in place, a great partnership and that's why we come out with films that are diametrically very different from what the rest of India is making. Till now, uh, as long as uh, they're doing the numbers, we're still going to churn out five songs and bad screenplays, you know. So, the day, uh, like Pandora's Cafe is the best case in point where the audience actually sat up and said, hey, we'd like to see something different and proved it with numbers. When our research pre the release of the film showed us that we'd completely fail and we wouldn't even last a show. So I have faith in my audience and I have faith that they want to see different films, credible films, good screenplays. And I have faith that my audience does not want to all the time see five songs in a film where a heroine's input is only to come and dance. So she walks away with the credit. And um, we need something beyond that and I don't mean to sound condescending towards this because we've all done it. I'm, I'm part and parcel of the same. Uh, this. So as a producer, actor, I want to make that change which is why Vicky Donor was a change as a producer but Madras Cafe was a complete departure as an actor and producer where we came with a film that said it has Johnny Abraham but no, no bare body scenes. A. It has Johnny Abraham, no beating up wife's killer, you know, it has John Abraham, no song and dance, so there was nothing that was formula Bollywood, it was an Indian film that had great narrative and that worked on the merit of its story, and that's the way films should be made. Yes, there has been criticism about item numbers and showing women in a suggestive way, um, I think we've all got a point and I think uh, it's, it's, it's a director's prerogative to use this creative liberty in a more responsible manner. So I buy that point. Uh, there is also a need for it, uh, as so the producers feel, because uh, they get the cash registers ringing. So it's a very, uh, it's a very precarious uh, situation to be in, and uh, you know, it's, it's just about really what you want. Do you want commerce or do you want credibility? And then you take it from there. So sometimes as producers or directors you succumb to the idea of commerce and you say listen an item number is going to give me the commerce I really want but sometimes uh, you know maybe a, maybe credibility takes over and he says listen I, I'd rather make an honest film more than anything else. I think uh, the uh, first of all I don't like the word Bollywood. I like, uh, I like it being called the Indian film industry because we are not subservient to Hollywood I would like to believe though we deserve that tag because we've copied so much. Uh, I also think uh, we, in our industry, our industry singularly is probably the most powerful tool that any country has in, in terms of the film industry in India is, is the single most powerful tool to influence change. In other countries, films exist and coexist with sport and other cultural activities. In India, films is the only way of recreation that people see except for the occasional cricket match. So if we can't influence change, no one can. And I think we must influence change in the rightest possible manner. 
and sooner than later before we are completely decimated and downgraded to a junk status in terms of our films as caricaturists, you know, caricaturist films just producing song and dance. I think it's important to market a film, but I also believe the way we market our films is completely wrong. Uh, you're talking about coming to Dubai and having press conferences. I think that's still credible. Uh, there was a time we were, and I hope, and the people still are, sent out into malls in the country and the cities and we're asked to throw CDs and uh, t-shirts at people and I think it's absolutely derogatory. I never did that in my last four or five films and I refused to do it. Um, with Madras Cafe I was asked to go on comedy shows and I said no way am I doing that because my film's credibility is too high and at stake. So I think uh, it's, it's an actor who must take a stand and decide. There are actors who can't take a stand and do it because they also get insecure thinking that if they don't promote it, they'll be written about or they'll be looked upon in a negative way. So yeah, it's very easy for a producer to tell an actor, listen, go to Dubai or go to London because if you don't, the journals there are going to get really upset and you know, you're going to be ripped apart. So an actor out of insecurity sometimes just lands up. But uh, I believe an actor's... Uh, got a mind of his own so if any actor says if it was an R this then we wouldn't well you have a mind of your own you, you, you should do it and if you don't have a mind of your own then be a horse that's uh, be, be, be cattle that's going to be herded anyway so I think I've been party uh, I mean I've, I've been party to all this and I'm also to blame with all this but I think uh, I have started making a change and I think if I have started doing it at least now, others should do it. But that's ridiculous. I mean, uh, you know, that's another thing is, uh, I believe that time is money. And uh, in my 11 years of my career, a little more than 10 years, I have never been late. And uh, I believe there are people sitting and waiting for you. It's a mark of respect. And you must respect them back by being on time. And uh, uh, I have done that each and every time, been on time and I've never kept anyone waiting and I think uh, in my production, I don't think I tolerate anybody who would keep anyone waiting, even on production for the press or for anyone even a simple guest who's sitting waiting for a meeting so it's important to respect people's time. Yeah, I think the mindset has changed, there may be uh, I don't know, I mean I maybe because I don't get the papers in the house it's been 8 years now there may be stray incidents where actors turn up late, but uh, all in all, I think if I have to stand up for my, my fraternity, I think most of them have been fair and have been on time. So if someone's late, then I think it's a representation of our fraternity and I don't stand for that. Uh, I tweet myself, but I'm not, I've just gotten to social media in the past nine months, ten months, so I don't have that many followers. Uh, but I tweet myself and I tweet about everything that has to do with anything other than film. So I mostly tweet about motorcycles because I love motorcycles. So I'm, I come from a completely different space. Uh, people who follow me, uh, uh, I really respect them because they like me for the things I like rather than the films I do. So it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, you know, when you read certain comments, but yes, I do tweet myself.